Okay, number seven. So for this type of problems, every time you got a subject term as a power of the usual equation, in other words, you got x and y as a power, you could usually just solve this easily using logs. In other words, you could take logs and pretty much get this done. Now, the way I did it here, and just to do this fast, I took logs on both sides, and the unique feature about logs is that you can, of course, use this kind of property here, where you have, let's say, log a to the power n, and what this really means is that the n can will just drop in front of the log, so it looks like this, n times log a. So that's the unique feature about logs, and it helps us solve many like more complicated problems, especially with powers. So looking at the solution, so with y minus 1, you could just essentially drop in front of the log, so it'd be y minus 1 times log 1.01, and log 500 is the same, and then just rearrange and make y the subject. So what I did, I just divided log 1.01 across, and then added 1, and then I got something like this. You could just smash this in the calculator and get the answer, but if you're not sure how to type the log button, you could use the alternative and use ln500 over ln1.01, or, or equivalently, you could just use log 10500, so log 10500 over log 101.01, plus 1 to give us the answer. But yeah, just be careful how you input this properly. It's best to put this if you see it exactly as it is. That's all. Okay, part 2. So given that we have a typical log equation, which is in terms of base log 4, show that all of this can be written as a quadratic equation and hence solve that equation, okay, using, you know, usual quadratic formula. Okay, so first things first, let's just write this down over here nicely, and that's what I did over here. Now, the first thing you, you want to notice over here is that when you're working with logs, get rid of any number in front of the logs. That's the first step. So this 2 here needs to go. Using the power of logs, when you have a number in front, it goes straight over here. So that's why we got a 2 over here. Next rule. Since you've got two terms in terms of log 4, my advice is to throw them all on the on the same side. So I would move the, the, the right-hand log to the left side, yeah? So subtract it. And then using the rule, when you're subtracting logs, for example, log A minus log B, you always get log A over B. So essentially, you're going to get 3x plus 5 squared over 3x plus 8. So that this part here is essentially a over b. Okay, so this bit is easy. Once you're here now, this is start. This is this is where you really have to just notice that we have to get rid of the log entirely. Now to get rid of the log, we can use something known as the ladder rule, and that is if we fix some pivot n. So in other words, if we call all of this n and just lock it here for a second, we can use a staircase method and just raise a up once and b up as well. So it'll be n equals this a going up and this b going up. So like a ladder. So a to power b. So looking at this number, if we fix this entire um, term um, here, we just bring the 4 up and the 1 up. So be all of this equals 4 to power 1. So yeah, this is just a nice little rule. I recommend you guys really memorize the ladder rule and of course the general log a, a minus or plus b. If, if you had to just for a second add them up, this is the same as multiplying. So it would be log a times b. Okay. Anyway, getting back to the question, so now we're here. This is easy to solve. So all we want to do now is just clear the fraction, so times 3x plus a across, so it'll be 4 times the right-hand side, and then you're left with the, double, the squared bracket. Expand the squared bracket, so remember, this is 3x plus 5 times 3x plus 5. And if you expand it correctly, you know, using the FOIL method, you should get something like this on the left. And this is easy to expand to get down the right. Now just subtract 12x and 32 to the left side, or across, and you, and you eventually get what they want, which is 9x squared plus 18x minus 7. And double checking that, you should get that. Yes, you should. So quite straightforward. Now finally, you know what to do here. This is a quadratic equation. So let 9 equals a, 18 be b, and c is minus 7. Smash into the standard quadratic formula, and you should get two solutions, a third or minus 7 and 3. Now the reason why I said this is the only solution is because we have to be very careful here. So looking at the equation, it's, we have like a fixed domain, which is over here. This tells us that x needs to be greater than minus 5 over 3. But the logic behind this is that we cannot really, we cannot have a negative value inside the logs. Just like square root functions. This means that the minimum value has to be, for this, for this to actually work, has to be bigger than um, uh, 0. Okay, same with this one here. So that's why they put this, it imposes limit. And now looking at this value, for the x value is greater than minus 5 thirds, well, minus 7 thirds is slightly less so that's why we only have one third and that's it that's literally all of this done